today uh, we will listen to uh, Second Samuel chapter 11 to 12 and Psalm chapter 51. Today's title is David Sinned and Was Restored. Before we listen to today's word, uh, let us review what we heard last Sunday's worship. David made a covenant with Jonathan, his best friend. He promised he would show the Lord God's kindness to him and his family when he would become the king of Israel. David became the king of Israel. He remembered the covenant with Jonathan. He showed the Lord God's kindness to Mephibosheth, a son of Jonathan. He gave him back all the fields that belonged to his grandfather Saul. He had Ziba, the servant of Saul, to serve Mephibosheth. He had him eat at the king's table with his children. David was kind to Mephibosheth. It was because he made a covenant with Jonathan. He kept the covenant. David sent his army to fight against enemies. He did not go into the battle, but he stayed behind in the palace. One day, he took a nap. After he woke up, he went up to the roof to take a walk. While he was taking a walk, he came to see a woman taking a bath. She was very beautiful. David wanted to make a love with her. And so he sent someone to find out who she was. She was Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah, one of the best warriors in the army. David should have stopped wanting to make a love with her because he knew she was the wife of Uriah but he kept a strong desire or passion to take her and make a love with her. He was coveting her. He broke the 10th commandment in the 10th commandment. Let's read it first together. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 21. David knew Uriah, the husband of Bathsheba, was in the battleground. It meant Bathsheba stayed alone at home. Though David knew what he was to do was adultery, he sent for her and slept with her. He brought the seventh commandment in the 10th commandment. Let's read it first together. You shall not commit adultery. Exodus chapter 20, verse 14. It was after her monthly period, there was a possibility she could conceive a baby. But Shiva conceived a baby. She sent a letter to David. She was pregnant with a baby. Let, let us read this first together. Then David sent messengers to get her. She came to him and he slept with her. Now she was purifying herself from her monthly uncleanness. Then she went back home. The woman conceived and sent word to David saying, I am pregnant. Second Samuel chapter 11, verse 4 to 5. David planned to hide his sin. The plan was that he would make Uriah sleep with Bathsheba, his wife. If Uriah would sleep with his wife, he would believe the baby that was pregnant was his child. So David sent for Uriah from the battleground. He told him to go to his home and have a sound sleep. But Uriah did not go home. He slept at the gate to the palace with the other armed men. Next day, David called Uriah and asked him why he did not go home. Uriah answered, he could not go home because he was convicted to go home alone while other soldiers were camping in the battleground. Let's read it first together. Uriah said to David, the ark and Israel and Judah are staying in tents and my commander Joab and my Lord's men are camped in the open country. How could I go to my house to eat and drink and make love to my wife? As surely as you live, I will not do such a thing. Second Samuel chapter 11, verse 11. David was afraid when Uriah decided he would not go home. So David made another plan. He invited Uriah to have a meal with him. 
he made him get drunk, but Uriah did not go home this time either. He kept his words, he would not go home and sleep with his wife. Instead, he slept at the barrack. Let's read this verse together. At David's invitation, he ate and drank with him, and David made him drunk. But in the evening, Uriah went out to sleep on his mat. Among his master's servants, he did not go home. 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 13. David became much more afraid when Uriah did not go home and sleep with his wife. He was afraid Uriah would finally know he committed adultery with Bathsheba, his wife. After all, the law of Moses commanded adulterers must pay for their sin with death. Let's read this verse together. If a man commits adultery with another man's wife, with the wife of his neighbor, both the adulterer and both the adulteress are to be put to death. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 10. David must pay for his sin with death when Uriah and the people of Israel would know he committed adultery. So David had two options. Either he would die or he would put Uriah to death so that he could hide his sin. David chose the second option. He wrote a letter to Joab, the commander of the army. In the letter, he ordered Joab to put Uriah in the fierce battle and retreat while leaving Uriah behind. David sealed the letter and sent it to Joab via Uriah. Joab read the letter. He simply followed his master's order as exactly as written in the letter. Joab put Uriah in the fierce battle spot while leaving him behind. Uriah, along with other men, died by the sword. Though David did not put Uriah to death by his own hand, he was responsible for his death along with others. And so David broke the sixth commandment in the Ten Commandments. Let's read this verse together. You shall not murder. Exodus chapter 20, verse 13. Joab sent a messenger to David. The messenger told David, some of the men along with Uriah died in the battle. Let's read this verse together. Then the archers shot arrows at your servant from the wall, and some of the king's men died. Moreover, as your servant Uriah the Hittite is dead. David told the messenger, say this to Joab, don't let this accept you. The sword devours one as well as another. Press the attack against the city and destroy it. Say this to encourage Joab. 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 12, 4 to 25. Bathsheba mourned for her husband's death. She became a widow. David took Bathsheba as his wife. The people of Israel, who did not know what had happened between David and Bathsheba, could have thought their king did a very wonderful job when he took Bathsheba, who was pregnant, as his wife. But the Lord God knew all things. David could hide his sin from people, but he could not hide his sin from the Lord God. What, God, what David did was evil in the eyes of the Lord God. Let's read this verse together. After the time of mourning was over, David had her brought to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing David had done displeased the Lord. 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 27. It passed about 10 months. The baby between David and Bathsheba was born. The Lord God sent Nathan to tell David a judgment message. Nathan said a story to David. There was a rich man and a poor man in a village. The rich man had a lot of sheep and bulls, but the poor man had only one little female lamb. He raised it and it grew up with him and his children. He shared his food and drink. He even slept in his arms. He was like a daughter to him. Now a traveler came to the rich man. The rich man did not take one of his own sheep or bulls to prepare meals for the traveler. Instead, he snatched away the little female lamb that belonged to the poor man and prepared it as the meal. When David heard the story, he became very angry. He said, let's read it first together. David, 
burned with anger against the man and said to Nathan, As surely as the Lord lives, the man who did this must die. He must pay for the lamb for times over because he did such a thing and had no pity. 2 Samuel chapter 12, verses 5 to 6. Then Nathan said to David, the word of God. Let's read this verse together. Then Nathan said to David, you are the man. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. I anoint you king over Israel and I delivered you from the hand of Saul. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I gave your master's house to you and your master's wives into your arms. I gave you all Israel and Judah. And if all this had been too little, I would have, I would have given you even more. Why did you despise the word of the Lord by doing what is evil in his eyes? You struck down Uriah the Hittite with a sword and took his wife to be your own. You killed him with the sword of the Ammonite. Now, therefore, the sword will never depart from your house because you despised me and took the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your own. 2 Samuel chapter 7, 12, verses 7 to 10. Nathan continued the Lord God's judgment message. Let's read this verse together. This is what the Lord says. Out of your own household, I'm going to bring calamity on you. Before your very eyes, I will take your wives and give them to one who is close to you. And he will sleep with your wives in broad daylight. You did it in secret, but I will do this thing in broad daylight before all Israel. 2 Samuel chapter 12, verses 11 to 12. David knew he had sinned against the Lord God when he heard his judgment message. He confessed his sins before him. He asked him for the forgiveness of his sins. The Lord God forgave his sins right away when he repented of them. But David was to suffer the punishment for his sins. Let's read this verse together. Then David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Nathan replied, the Lord has taken away your sin. You are not going to die. 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 13. Later, David wrote a poem. There he confessed he was brokenhearted because of his sins. He asked him the forgiveness of his sins. He believed the Lord God would forgive him because he believed the Lord God would show his kindness or steadfast love to him. Let's read this verse together. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions, wash away all my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. John chapter 51, verse 1 and 2. Let's read this verse together. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, you, God, will not despise. John chapter 51, verse 17. David sinned against the Lord God. He, he coveted Uriah's wife, and so he broke the 10th commandment, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife. He committed adultery with Bathsheba, and so he broke the 7th commandment, you shall not commit adultery. He put Uriah to death, and so he broke the sixth commandment, you shall not murder. He could hide his sins from people, but he could not hide them before the Lord God who knew all his sins. David was brokenhearted when he listened to the Lord God's judgment message. He confessed his sins. He asked for the forgiveness of his sins. He was not to die for his sins, but he was to suffer the punishment for his sins, though he was forgiven. Jesus Christ died for our sins. He not only died for our sins, but he also suffered the full punishment for our sins. We are not only forgiven our sins because Jesus Christ suffered and died for them, but we do not also pay the punishment for our sins because Jesus Christ suffered them and paid them by his own death. Let's read this verse together. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. 
but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. Isaiah chapter 53, verses 4 to 5. God does not punish our sins, but he disciplines us for our sins to correct us just as a father disciplines his children. Let's read this verse together. And have you completely forgotten this word of encouragement that addresses you as a father addresses his son? It says, my son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose your heart when he rebukes you because the Lord disciplines the one he loves and he chastens everyone he accepts as his son. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 5 to 6. What God wants us is to put faith in Jesus Christ. What God wants us is a broken heart before him when, he, when we sin and when he, convicts of our, when he convicts us of our sins. I pray you will believe in Jesus Christ who bore your sins, suffered the punishment for them, and died to pay the punishment for them. I pray you will always be brokenhearted because, before God whenever he convicts you of your sins. Heavenly Father, today our children listen to David sinning against you. He broke three of the commandments in the Ten Commandments. He thought he was able to hide his sin, but you knew all of his sins and you judged him according to his evil deeds. Even though David was forgiven when he repented of his sins, you proclaimed that he was going to suffer the punishment because he deserved the punishment. Lord, we know that we also deserve the punishment when we sin before you, but you sent your son Jesus Christ and he bore our sins and he suffered the punishment for our sins and he died to pay all the punishment for our sins. So we are no longer receiving the punishment. We are no longer liable to punishment before you when we sin and when we repent of our sins. Lord, help our children always put their faith in, faith in Jesus Christ and let them always forgive, ask the forgiveness for their sins and let them believe that they will not be punished by their sins, but you always discipline them when they sin because you want them to be your, you want them to have the, uh, to resemble Jesus Christ just as they are uh, your children. Let them not be guilt stricken. Let them not have, let them not, let them, let their hearts not be uh, despaired of their sins. But let them be always brokenhearted before you when they come, when they sin before you and when they are convicted of their sins by you. Please give these uh, wonderful blessings upon their lives and let them always trust you of, about your words. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <clears throat> Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts, and as you have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Mr.